everybody, I'm Allie Buckman with the Potomac Bead Company and today I am going to do some pinwheel earrings for you. These are going to be featuring the Nibbit beads, which are a two-hole kind of pie-shaped bead that actually gets smaller as they get towards the tip. So we're going to be using those to do these pinwheel earrings. If you need any of the materials to do these earrings with me, up in the right hand corner of the video, if you kind of take your mouse and scroll over or your finger, there should appear a little eye for you guys, and that's information from us, um, which would have links to some of these products that you can purchase online. Also below the video, there's always a description about what the video is, what date it was produced. If you look there, there's usually a little button or a down arrow that says show more. And underneath that description, we always have a list, too, of the materials for you. So that way you can get links to all of them and get a list of the things that you need. For these pinwheel earrings, what you are going to be using, again, are these nibbit beads. So the nibbits, kind of dump them out for you here. The color that I'm going to be using are the white baby blue luster. And I used um, this uh, metallic rose olivine color for the example. For the nibbits, for each little pinwheel, you're gonna be using eight nibbits. So I just kinda of wanted to show you what they look like. Like I said, they're almost like a little pie wedge um, that they have. They are more narrowed at the tip and then they get thicker and almost box-like at the back. So eight per earring, so you're gonna do 16 of those nibbits all together for the actual earring design. We also have a nice pendant that we did um, that Ashley at Potomac Bead Company designed and then I did a video on. So you may have some extra nibbits, make a pair of earrings to match that nice Rivoli pendant that we did with those. In addition to the nibbits, we are using some three by four millimeter rondelles. Those are gonna be around the outside of the earring and you're gonna need 10 of those in total. If you wanna put one in the middle, like I did here, then you're gonna need 12 of them. I'm gonna switch in my design from the Potomac Crystal Rondelles, which I'm using in the metallic green iris color. I'm gonna use them around the sides and at the top right near my ear wire. But then I thought it would look nice to put a Monty and get a little bit more bling in the middle. So I have the Emerald AB Monty and I'm gonna be using two of those Montys. These Montys are SS20 in size and they'll fit right nicely kind of in the center here of the earring. So again, two Montes if you want them, and then uh, 10 of your three by four millimeter crystals, or 12 of the crystals if you just wanna do the whole thing in the crystals. In addition to the nibbits, the crystals, and the Montes, I also have some 15O seed beads in the hematite or gunmetal color, and then I have 11O seed beads in the aluminum silver, both of which are, are the Mayuki brand. So the Miyuki brand is what I'm using for these earrings. I also have two ear wires that will kind of bring into play later on. Any type of ear wire will do. The whole thing will be strung on some wildfire in .006 wildfire. I have the white here. I'm probably, um, you can pick up the green, you can pick up the white, depending on what colors you're working with, either will work. Um, I have the white here sitting near the mat, so I'll just use the white for you guys. I also have a size 12 needle that I'll be looking to use, and this is the Pony brand of the size 12. And then a thread zap or a thread burner, um, a cord cutter, anything that burns the end of the thread is helpful, especially because you're going to have a knot kind of tied in the back. And I just changed my thread burner, so I'll show you guys how you can burn that knot down even more. Since I changed the battery, it's going to work like a charm. I also have a needle nose pliers sitting here um, or a bent needle nose pliers here. Chain nose or needle nose pliers will be used to flatten out the end of the thread, which is gonna make it much easier to thread that size 12 needle with that .006 thread. I'm gonna start the project by pouring out um, four, or I'm sorry, five of my crystals, my nibbits, a grouping of eight of them, and then little piles of my beads as well. I'm gonna go ahead and do one of the earrings with you guys, and then have you guys do another one, and then we'll put them on the ear wires. So to start out, I have about four feet of my thread that I cut and I put onto my size 12 needle. I'm gonna begin by picking up four of my nippet beads through the bottom or the thinner hole so the kind of the center piece of the pie there 
I'm picking up four of the nib bits. I'm gonna let those drop down towards the end of my thread and then I'm gonna tie a knot. I want you to tie a nice square knot, right over left and then left over right, two times. Once you have that, you can kind of lay your nib bits out and put them in that fan or that pinwheel shape. From there, grab your thread and needle and take your needle through the nib bit closest to the knot through that same first hole. What we're gonna do now is we're going to step up by taking the needle and thread and going through the second hole of the same nib bit that your thread is coming out of with the thread reversing in direction. This is gonna put a little bit of thread there on the side. Don't worry, by the time we add in the extra beads, you will not see it. From there, it's really kind of easy to finish up the pinwheel by adding another nib bit that's going to sit in between the nib bits that you added before. So the second nib bit gets added through the first hole and you go through the second hole of the original nib bit next in line. Add another one and go through the third nib bit in line. Add another and go through. So again, we're just going through this first hole of this nib bit. As I come to the last one, I'm gonna go through that first nib bit that I did as well as the first one that I put on the second grouping. There you get your full kind of pinwheel effect of those eight nib bits in place. From here, we're going to actually add the beads on the outside of the nib bits. So these look nice even if you just want to keep them undecorated and do the outer portion like I have it. The outer portion to step up from the first hole of the second row of nib bits to the second hole, we're going to simply do like we did after the first and step up from the first to the second hole going along the side of one of the nib bits. Coming out the side then, the pattern is going to be 11, or I'm sorry, 15, 11, crystal, and then reverse that 11, 15, and so into the next nib bit. And that kind of closes up that gap there and then connects, excuse me, all the holes, the second holes of the nib bits. So again, it's 15, 11, crystal, 11, 15, sew so in. I'm doing this the whole way around, getting my four crystals in place with the seed beads on the side. If you wanna use something other than a three by four millimeter rondelle, a three millimeter bicone or round will work. It just won't stick out as far on the side. Also, if you have something else that you wanna use, you can play around with the spacing and um, take away an 11 0 if you want to use something that's bigger, so you can do that as well. For the final one now, what we're going to do is we are going to sew through that first nib bit that our thread was coming out, and that creates our first little outer circle of our nib bit. From there, we are going to create V's, basically. See those V's that are in there? We're going to sew and create the V's. To create the V's, when you're coming out of a nib bit, I want you to add an 11 L and seven 15s. And then an 11 L. What we're gonna do is actually circle around the nib bit. So the thread's coming out the nib bit at the bottom. I add an 11, seven 15s and an 11 and then put the thread into the top of that same nib bit, which is gonna kind of sit those beads right along the top. From there, I'm gonna reinforce those that outer edge that I did by sewing back through the 15s and the 11s. Sew through the next nib bit also, 
and do your seed beads at the top. Again, 111, 7 of our 15s, 111, back through the nibbit, circling around so that the seed beads sit right on the top. Again, through the seed beads and the crystals that we put on the side. Give a nice tight pull. So through the nibbit, and repeat adding those nine beads again. I have one more to go that I'll add for you guys. Going through then the crystals and along the side. If you're an avid beater or somebody that's experienced, you probably think, oh, I could have done this as I was adding the sides. You can do that, that as you add the crystals in and sew through the nibbit, you can circle around, add the crystals in, sew through the nibbit and circle around. That's up to you. The advantage that I have right now by kind of going back and doing this as a whole second step is one, it makes it easier for you guys to that aren't avid beaters to comprehend, and two, it actually tightens up and kind of reinforces these sides. So I'm going to go ahead and circle around my last of my 15 ohms and pull the thread in. From here, you can see we kind of have a pretty design that you could work up into something else if you want. But what we're going to actually do is bring these beads here down in towards the center. To bring them into the center, we need a bead at the center that they can catch. To get a bead at the center, I want you to take your needle and thread after you're coming out the last of your nib bits and go from the top hole to the bottom hole of that same nib bit, exposing just a tiny bit of thread on the side. From there, sew through one of the inner nib bits, going through the outer hole, and then going to the inner hole. This should have your needle and thread coming out right along the center, coming out one of the bottom holes of the first nib bits. From here, I'm going to add a 15 ohm seed bead. And along the top, again, we have seven beads that we added in the fifth, size 15. I'm going to count over one, two, three, and sew through the fourth bead in line. Once I pick up that fourth bead, it's going to pull the thread and that little V down towards the center of the pinwheel. From there, take your needle and thread and go through the next nib bit. See, and it pulls it right in there. So again, you're going to add a 15 out, circling around to the next section here. You can see that fourth bead kind of sticking up nicely for me. So through the fourth bead along the top row of the 15s, give a nice pull, and sew in to the next nib bit. That pulls that one in. Again, 15 goes on. Grab the fourth bead in line. Pull down. Sew through the next center hole of the nib bits. Give a nice little tight yank. We have one more to go here. Grab a 15. So through. And so through the next nib bit. When I come out the next nib bit, I'm going to bring my needle and thread oops, straight out on one of the sides. 
And you can see that gets that kind of nice V shape that's going on with bringing in the seed beads towards the nibbits and kind of highlighting them. From here, I get to put in my Monty. So go ahead and grab your Monty out and we'll get ready to add the Monty in. With your thread and needle, if it's coming out right after your, your nibbit, you wanna sew through the 15-0 that's right next to it. From there, I'm coming out one of the center 15-0s that I added and the thread's coming out on the right hand side. I'm gonna add one of my Montes, which if you're not familiar with the Monty, they have two holes that oppose one another and crisscross along the back. So it doesn't matter for this first one which one you do. And I'm sewing through one of the first holes there. Going over to the opposite side, I'm gonna grab the 15-0 that I added that's across from there. That's going to bring the Monty kind of sitting flat down. Take the needle and thread and then go back through the Monty, going through the same hole. So you can see there the thread kind of loops and that's going to pull it down nice and tight towards the project. On the inner side here then, you're going to go into that same 15 that you started with, going into the opposite side of the 15 and taking the needle and thread through. I'm giving a nice tight pull. If you want to do the crystal, you just put the crystal on. And before the crystal, I put two seed beads. So two seed beads, crystal, two seed beads, and then proceeded the same way, kind of catching the 15 O's. From here then, we're going to sew through one of the center holes of the nibbit, or the center hole of the nibbit that's next to it, and then bring our needle out. If you need to, you can kind of flip the project to the back in order to do that. If by accident, when you're sewing through the nibbit, you sew through some of the beads, don't worry about it. What I'm gonna do is unsew through some of the beads and come out. You do want your thread and needle coming out the 15-0 that you added in between the nibbits. So you want to make sure that you sew through that 15 -0 seed bead. From there, you're going to go through the second hole of the Monty. Remember, the Montes have that X shape and out. On the opposite side, you're going to sew through the 15 -0 that we added on the opposite side. which you kind of might need to bring to the surface a little bit. And we're doing the same thing then, sewing in from one side through the 15 to the other side. So I'm going through that 15 now, and then back through the Monty. pulling nice and tight, and that'll tighten it up. If you have a different size Monty that's smaller, you can simply add a 15-0 before and after each hole of the Monty, and that way you won't see any of your thread exposed. At this point here, this little pinwheel earring is pretty much done. It makes a nice kind of cross outline with the Monty. It makes a more swirl when you use the crystal because it kind of has to turn on its side. So that's up to you. Um, it has, like I said, kind of a nice cross look to it. When the thread's coming out the Monty then, what I wanna do is I wanna make a loop here at the top. If you wanna keep it in that cross look, you're gonna make the loop above the crystal. If you wanna keep it on kind of an X look, which is what I'll do, we're gonna make our loop in a second right above one of our nib bits. To get to one of the nib bits, we're gonna go through the 15 OC bead to complete kind of that step of getting the Monty securely in. And we're going into the 15 that the thread was originally coming out of for that side of the Monty. Once you're through that 15 you can take your thread and needle if you want and either snake up through the Montes, go, or up through the nib bits rather, excuse me, or you can sew up the line that's closest to it of the actual uh, seed beads along the line. 
I have the advantage of having the seed beads right there, nice and in line. So I sewed up the seed beads, sewed up through the 11-0 seed bead, and then out the nib bit. When we're out the nib bit, we're going to make a little V here in order to put a crystal on top to do our loop. To do the V, I want you to add an 11-0, followed by three 15s, followed by one of your crystals, followed by seven of your 11s. Once you have those seven 11s on, let it all drop down next to the nib bit. Take your thread and needle and go back through just the crystal bead, so I'm back towards the little earring pendant. From there, we're gonna add three more 15s and one more 11. Like we did previously, we're gonna sew through the nib bit in a circular fashion coming out right after the nib bit. That's gonna pull that little ear wire section right above. When you're coming out of the nib bit to kind of fill in a little space, I wanna add a 15 out, then reinforce and sew back up through the whole entire um, top bail portion. So I add a 15 out, which kind of covers in that thread right there, and I'm reinforcing then, sewing back through all of those beads that I just added. Once you come down the other side then, oops, I'm gonna sew through the crystal again. Remove some of that tail there. Sewing through the crystal again. And then my thread and needle are gonna come out the opposite side after the 11-0. So I reinforced after the 11-0 then, I'm gonna put on a 15 and sew through that same nib bit. And the 15 is just gonna kind of cover that hole a little bit. What I'm going to uh, do is make sure that my thread and needle are coming out right after the nib bit too. From there, I'm almost right above where the knot, original knot is. I'm gonna go from the top hole to the bottom hole of that upper nib bit and bring the needle out. Right there then, I'm gonna tie off my threads because my thread ends are almost next to one another. If you want to and you have a lot of thread, you can burn one down, tie the knot, and we'll do a square knot, right over left, switch hands, and then left over right. If you want to, you can use some super new glue to glue that knot closed a little bit. I'm just gonna take my burner, burn nice and close towards the project, and then burn each thread end down. Nice and flush. And there you have your little pinwheel nib bit earring. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a second one of these and then I'll show you guys how we add them to our ear wires. So now that my little nibbit pinwheels are done here, I'm gonna go ahead and add my ear wires. And it really doesn't matter what kind of ear wire you are using, if you're using a fish hook or if you're using a post, it's up to you. I have a pair of fish hooks here and they usually open towards the back or towards the front. What you wanna make sure whenever you have a pair of, um, fish hooks or a pair of earrings that have an eye pin like this, which is what this is referred to, that you want to bend to the side and open it rather than pulling back. What that's going to do is that's going to keep that perfect loop shape intact. You're going to slide your earring on and then close up that loop. And there you have your earring. If you wanted to also, coming out the crystal, you could have used a wire guard, which gave a nice finished look to the end as well. So again, I'll grab the second one here, kind of pull to the side, make sure the earring's facing in the correct direction, 
hide it on and close it up. Easy as can be. And then you have your fun pair of your Nibbit pinwheel earrings. Again, if you need any of the materials to do any of these pinwheel style earrings, you can go back to the beginning of the video when I described it, below the video, to the description of the video, or you can go to that little eye in the top corner of the video and get that information as well. Um, the nippets are brand new, so again, if you haven't gotten a chance to check those out, check those nibbits out and pick some of those up. You can also check out um, the nibbits on the video with the Rivoli as well. Anytime you want to search one of our videos by beads, you can go back to our homepage, which has kind of a little store tour there at the top, and there's a little magnifying glass underneath there. You can search in that magnifying glass and put in any of the materials that you're looking to use, and the videos that use those materials will come up. So that's a nice kind of helpful hint of how to search our actual YouTube site. And that's if you're on a desktop um, or a laptop computer that you'll see it kind of come up that way. Again, as always, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel to get regular updates on new products like the Nibbits, new design like these pinwheel earrings, as well as what's going on and kind of staying abreast of the beading world. You can also join us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and all those good kind of social media outlets, as well as shop for me from PotomacBeads.com. You can also ask to become a member of our Facebook uh, beading group for beading and jewelry making. Ask to become a member there and interact with a great group of people that love the art of making jewelry, love to make designs, are really helpful in answering questions, helping with color combinations, giving ideas, and so forth. So as always, everybody, thank you so much for watching these Nibbit Pinwheel earrings and have fun creating.